Hi, welcome back to our second video on the introduction to series and sequences. Again, like I said, for this video, you're going to learn what is a series and how to solve them. What is this new notation, S sub N and sigma? And um, what does it mean when I say convergent and divergent? And how do you figure that out for yourselves? So jumping just right on into convergence and divergence. A convergent is, uh, is a, the a convergent sequence is a sequence whose limit approaches a unique number. And a divergent sequence is a sequence whose limit does not approach a unique number. Hmm. Fun vocabulary, or we could see it for ourselves. So if I ask you to determine whether the sequence, this following sequence, is a convergent or divergent sequence, well, what would you do? The first thing Ms. Jag would do or Ms. Power would do is she would plug in those numbers and figure out a uh, plot point, graph it out, visualize it for myself. So I plug in N0 and 1, 2, 3, 4, and I plug it all the way in to uh, N sub 7. So I know my zeroth term, I know my I know my zeroth term, I know my first term, my second term, my third term, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and so on. Now I'm going to plot those points. Well, what am I plotting? I can't just plot 12, 9, 6. It doesn't work that way. But there is a coordinate point here, 0, 12. 1, 9, 2, 6, etc., etc. So I can plug that in. 0, 12, 1, 9, 2, 6, 3, 3, 0, 4, 5, negative 3, 6, negative 6, and 7, negative 9. And what do you notice about the ends of your sequence? Are they at any point... Are they at any point moving to a single finite number? Well, the left end is going to infinite, positive infinity and the right end is going to negative infinity. So I'm going to say no. Our sequence does not approach a finite number. So it must be divergent. It did not approach a finite number. So let's see the opposite. Let's determine whether the sequence is convergent or divergent. This time I'm given a recursively defined formula instead of the explicit formula. So I have to solve in order. I'm not allowed to solve out of order. But let's just start with the first one. That one's nice and easy. We already know the first uh, term. They gave it to us. Second term, I plug it in, get it. Third, fourth, fifth. And this time I went all the way down to eight terms. I did use a calculator, if you, you can tell uh, from my decimals, um, but you could have left it in fraction form for yourself if you wanted to. So I plot those points, plotty plot, plot. And look, what do you notice is already starting to happen with my points? Hmm. Well, they are kind of converging on a single point. They're all converging. And if you look at the decimal points, they're all converging about, they're getting a lot closer to the number zero. And if you look at the visual representation, that is surely true. They're all converging about the number zero. So since it does approach a finite number, aka the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is equal to zero, then it must be convergent. Hmm. So the big difference between divergent and convergent, the easiest way is to visualize it, figure out what those values are. If you don't want to actually graph it out, you can just see the points. You can, you can watch and see, hey, these are just approaching infinity. Can, it must be divergent. Or these are all approaching the number four. So it must be convergent. Let's try one more. This one's kind of a unique one. I thought it was a little bit fun to plug away. So I use a calculator, plugged in each one of these points, and now I'm ready to plot them on a... Uh, plot them on a graph. We notice a pattern. Look at all of these negative values. Negative 0.2, negative 0.2, negative 0.2. Look at all the positive values. 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. So if you notice, hey, they're all converging about a single value. Positive 0.2 and then another single value. Negative 0.2. But the problem is it's not a single, unique, finite value. It's two of them. So because it's two guess what? It's still divergent. Even though the positive side is approaching and the negative side is approaching a unique number, it's approaching two. So it's still divergent. It is still divergent. So I've talked about convergence, divergence. What the heck is a series? We know what a sequence is. So now we need to figure out what a series is. Formal definition tells me it's the sum of all of the terms in a sequence. So if I take three, five, seven, nine, the infinite sequence, if I literally just put plus in between, it becomes a series. Uh, in this case, it would be an infinite series because we go on forever and ever. But all the series that we're going to practice today are going to be finite. We're going to go from a certain number to a certain number. Uh, 
So we want to find the fourth partial sum. We represent that phrase partial sum as S sub whatever. So in this one, it would be S sub four. And you'll see that pop up in just a moment. So the first thing we got to do is figure out what the first term, the second term, the fourth, third term, and the fourth term are so we can add all four together. So here's a formal de definition of that. We have to find the first four terms and then the sum. I just explained that. So here is N equals one. We plug it into the explicit formula provided. Then N equals two then n equals three, and finally, n equals four. Now, I've done the sequence, let's deal with the series. Let's add them up, one plus four plus seven, one plus seven plus negative five plus 19. And right here where I'm circling with my mouse, that is what I mean by this is the notation of a partial sum. S sub four would be the notation of a fourth partial sum. And so our answer for this one is simply 22, and that is it, we are done, I promise, it is that simple. So let's find the third partial sum, because that's what S sub 3 stands for, of A sub N is equal to 4 over 10 to the nth. Again, we're given a nice, neat, explicit formula. So we're going to find the first three terms. Plug in 1, plug in 2, and plug in 3. Oh, anything interesting that we noticed there? Look at that pattern, 0 0.4, 0 0.04, 0 0.004. So what do you think is going to happen when we add them all up? We end up with 0.444. So this is... A beautiful example of a um, how sequences and series show us all of the patterns that exist inside mathematics and uh, this is just that proof of what happens when we divide by 10. Find the sum of this. So in the previous examples I gave you an explicit formula and I simply said plug it in add them together. But what is this crazy notation? Well, this little funky E stands for sigma. It means take the sum up. So it literally means series. I mean, not literally. It, in essence, for us, it just means that's the series symbol. And in most mathematics, that's what we say. Hey, it's the series. But sometimes we just know it's the sum, but it always is talking about summing something. So it's a summation notation. So this wants to know the summation from one to five. So the first term plus the second term plus the third term plus the fourth term plus the fifth term. That's it. That's all that's saying. So we take four n minus three. Ah, formal definition. We take four n minus three. And we plug it in for n equals one, two, three, four, and five. Boom, boom, boom. Da da. So we've got our sequence: one comma five comma nine comma thirteen comma seventeen. Now let's add them up to get our series, the sum. So we add them together. Here's our answer. And I promise it is that simple. So what about this one? Well, this one's a little bit funkier because it doesn't start at n equals one. We have to make some mental adjustments. So let me show you what I did. Since n equals 3 is actually my first term, we literally just start there. Not a big adjustment, but we would never start with n equals 1 and n equals 2. You don't want to add those in because it's telling you to take just the sum from 3 to 7. So we get 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, and now we are ready to plug in those numbers. They're green on my screen. So I plug in my green numbers, I add them all together, and ta-da, there's the end answer. So the only big adjustment you have to make is that you have to start from where they tell you to start from. What about this one though? Up until now we've been dealing with finite series and I told you for the most part we're going to be doing finite series in this video. What about infinite series? Well, can I just add on forever and ever and ever and ever? I guess I could be sitting up all night trying to solve this question or I could see if a pattern is starting to emerge. So let's try plugging in the first term and the second term and the third. And we're going to go ahead and go all the way to five terms to see, do we notice a pattern? Well, going back to that 0 .4, 0 .04, 0 .004 thing, what do you think is going to happen here with 0 0.7, 0 0.07, 0 0.007, point blah, 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 blah? If you guessed that the answer is going to be 0 0.77777777777 repeating and so on and thus forth, you recognized, hey, we have... It, we do have an answer here. And even though I can't infinitely keep on adding forever and ever, I know that 0.77, either I could write it as 0.7 repeating, or some of you might recognize that it is a fraction of seven ninths. All righty. So that was all I've got for you guys. Uh, hopefully you understood what a sequence was, what a series is, the sum of the sequence. We learned a new notation. N stands for the term number. A sub N is this, uh, the 
sequence of that term. So A sub four would be the fourth term sequence, fourth term of that sequence. Um, S sub n would be the partial sum, and then just simply sigma is the sum, depending on what they tell you, you have to look at the information. New vocab, infinite versus finite, explicit versus recursive, and convergent versus divergent. And that's all I've got for you guys.